Veterans of World of Warcraft will be familiar with the Scarlet Crusade, an order of militant zealots that dedicated themselves to ridding the former kingdom of Lordaeron from the undead. The Crusade's goal might have seemed noble, but unknown to the world and to the members of the Order is that the upper echelon of its hierarchy was being manipulated by the dreadlord Balnazar, who had possessed the body of Sidon Dathrahan, the Grand Crusader. Balnazar twisted the Crusade into a paranoid, xenophobic, and cruel regime to serve as a tool that would combat the renegade Lich King and the free-willed undead known as the Forsaken. The Scarlet Crusade would eventually collapse from the pressure placed upon it by the forces of the Horde and the Alliance, the undead armies of the Scourge, and the righteous soldiers of the Argent Dawn, as well as its own internal struggles. But what if? What if the Scarlet Crusade were able to repel the forces of the Lich King? What if they were able to reclaim the capital of Lordaeron from the Forsaken? What effect would it have on the future of Lordaeron, and what effect would it have on Azeroth as a whole? What if the Scarlet Crusade had retaken Lordaeron? Part 1 Positioning the Pieces after the end of the Third War and the defeat of Archimonde, the Legion's forces on Azeroth were scattered. Sylvanas Windrunner had rallied the free-willed undead, now known as the Forsaken. She then wrestled control of Lordaeron's capital and the surrounding territories from the Dreadlords Balnazar, Datharok, and Veramothris. Veramothris, seemingly allied with the Banshee Queen in exchange for his life, betrayed his brothers. Detharok was defeated, torn apart, and banished to the Twisting Nether, while Balnazar was executed by Veramothris to prove his loyalty to Sylvanas. However, things were not all as they seemed. Balnazar was not banished to the Nether as Detharok was. Using the magic of the Nathrezim, Balnazar was able to fake his death and retreat into the Plaguelands. There, he began to set the stage of the Dreadlord's plan, the corruption of the Knights of the Silver Hand. Balnazar possessed the Lord Commander of the Order, Sidon Dathrahan, when the latter was separated from his forces during an assault on the Scourge-controlled city of Stratholm. Using Sidon's flesh as a disguise, the Dreadlord transformed the remnants of the Silver Hand into a new order, the Scarlet Crusade, with himself as its leader and the Grand Crusader. Now, some former members of the Silver Hand would later leave the Scarlet Crusade after witnessing the increased fanaticism that would overtake the Order. These members would go on to form the Argent Dawn, which is an organization opposed to both the Scourge and the Zealots of the Scarlet Crusade, who welcomed members from anywhere, including the Undead of the Forsaken. Beneath the ruins of Lordaeron, Sylvanas had established her capital, known as the Undercity. There Veramothris also dwelled, but under the watchful eyes of the Banshee Queen, he was not able to exercise his power as Balnazar was. However, Dreadlords have a way of persuading people to their cause. Over the years, Veramothris was able to command loyalty from a splinter faction within the Forsaken, under Grand Apothecary Putris. This group had access to the Forsaken's secret weapon, a new plague, deadly to both the living and the dead. Though the plague was, at the time, incomplete, it would prove to be a valuable tool in Veramothris' future plans. The two dreadlords were in position, and when the time permitted, they would slip away from their puppets to convene. The two would target individuals that could prove a hindrance to their plans, such as one of the former leaders of the Silver Hand, High Lord Alexandros Mograin, the Ashbringer. Balnazar would see to it that Alexandros would meet his end at the hands of his own son, Reynolt. Reynolt would be rewarded for his patricide with the position of commander of the Scarlet Monastery. But there was also another former knight of the Silver Hand that Balnazar had to contend with, an elderly hermit that had evaded his spies for some time. His name? Tyrion Forgering. The Fall of the Forgerings the death of Tyrion Forgering would change the future of the Plaguelands. Indeed, it would change the future of all of Azeroth. Without Tyrion, the Knights of the Silver Hand and the Argent Dawn would have never combined, and they would have never have become the Argent Crusade. 
Without Tyrion, his son Talon Forgering, High Lord of the Scarlet Crusade, would never seek to defect from the Scarlet Crusade. He would instead fall deeper under Balnazar's influence, like many others in the Order. Balnazar tasked his underling, Grand Inquisitor Asilian, with dispatching the elderly paladin. Tyrion had survived several attacks by Asilian's men, but finally, on the bank of the Thonderil River, the Scarlet Assassins were able to corner the elderly Forgering at his cottage home. The elderly paladin would put up a stubborn fight, but without the powers of the light that he once wielded, he would fall to the Scarlet's blades. His body and his home were burned. The Scourge could not be allowed another champion, and Talon could never learn of his own father's murder, lest it foster thoughts of betrayal. Talon was now trapped within the Crusade, and the Grand Crusader had a task for him. The Battle of Anderhal and the Purification of the Western Plaguelands Sidon Dathrahan tasked Talon Forgering with the retaking of the city of Anderhal from Scourge forces. Talon's loyalty was still in question, and what better way to cement it than by delivering a great victory for the Crusade? Talon would be seen as a liberator and hailed as a hero. It would instill pride in the young High Lord, pride that would be easily manipulated. High Lord Talon rallied the troops of Hearthglen and marched his forces south to Anderhal. Hearthglen's armies were formidable, as many of the former Knights of the Silver Hand had found refuge in Hearthglen after their order was banished and were absorbed into the Scarlet Crusade. Anderhal, although occupied by a sizable undead force, commanded by the Lich Araj the Summoner, was far from the scourge bastions of the Eastern Plaguelands. The battle would be grueling, but the armies of Hearthglen would smash the forces of the scourge at Anderhal slaying Araj and destroying his phylactery, ensuring his permanent death. Just to the south, Alliance forces stationed at Chilwyn Camp would have observed the Scarlet Crusade's victory. The Alliance, keen to see Lordaeron rebuilt, sent envoys to High Lord Talon Forgering, congratulating him on his proud victory. Although the Scarlet Crusade was often hostile to outsiders, they would send emissaries to Alliance lands to recruit new members to the Order. Talon, bearing no ill will to the Alliance, proposed a pact to the envoys. The Scarlet Crusade would purge the Plaguelands of the Scourge if the Alliance dedicated its forces to preventing the Horde from gaining ground in Lordaeron. The Crusade would march east, while the Alliance would hold the west. The pact was made and the Alliance moved its forces to combat the Horde in Hillsbrad and to hold the border between the Western Plaguelands and the Banshee Queen's territory of Tirisfall. Veramothris within the Undercity would make sure to send as many Forsaken as he could to their second death. Talon Forgering, with his west flank secure, would lead his forces to Kaer Daro, once a noble keep in the middle of Daramir Lake, now home to the Skolomance, a school of necromancy. The Scourge's mortal members were trained here in the Dark Arts, and to the Scarlet Crusade, they were living traitors to Lordaeron. Talon would lead a bloody purge of the halls of Kerdaro. The Scarlet Crusaders would cut down undead, abominations, teachers, students, young and old alike. Every parchment, every tome, every concoction of alchemy was destroyed. To the crusade, the taint of the scourge needed to be washed from the halls in blood. Talon himself would cut down the headmaster of the foul school, Darkmaster Gangling. After the battle, he would order Kerdaro to be burned to the ground, the entire keep being seen as a festering wound in need of cauterizing. With the bloody deed done, the Western Plaguelands, for the most part, were now secure. Retaking the Eastern Plaguelands With Talon Forgering's victory in the Western Plaguelands, the Scourge were now deprived of their westernmost city stronghold and their primary source of trained necromancers. Balnazar, entrenched firmly within the Scarlet Bastion in the city of Stratholme, knew that the next step was to rid the Plaguelands of its undead master, the Arch Lich, Kel'Thuzad. 
While Balnazar's elite troops within Stratholm, the Crimson Legion, were able to keep Kel'Thuzad's minions at bay, he needed reinforcements to push the Scourge out of the city and assault the Archlich's floating stronghold of Naxxramas. To the far east of the Plaguelands was the Scarlet Enclave, a strip of land unsoiled by the Scourge. This region held within it the towns of New Avalon, Havenshire, and the city of Tyr's Hand. The Scarlet Crusaders here had long clung to their lands, not wanting to risk drawing their forces away from the last bastion of normality within the Plaguelands. With Talon Fordring's victory in the west, the fanatical High General Bridget Abendis, commander of the Scarlet forces within the Enclave, would now be more confident of extending the armies of Tyr's Hand and New Avalon outward. Balnazar, with the hand of Satan Dathrahan, pens a message to Abendis and Forgering. The two are to unite forces. The forces of Hearthglen march east, and Talon leads his soldiers with newfound pride. The crusaders under his command are inspired by his presence. They push into Scourge territory, slowly clearing their way to Darrowshire. Meanwhile, Abendis leads her zealots out of Tyr's hand, and they assault the Scourge at Corin's Crossing, a vital crossroads for the traveling forces and transporting supplies. The Scourge here are strong, and the battle is not easy on the general. In the end, the Scourge are able to cling to the crossroads against the Scarlet Zealots, until Talon arrives with the armies of Hearthglen. The Scourge are now surrounded on both sides, and the Scarlet Crusaders do not hesitate to put them down. Talon and Abendis take time to tend to the wounded. Corpses are burned and plans are made for the grand march of the Crusade in the Plaguelands. The assault on the Plaguewood and the city of Stratholme. Before the battle can take place, however, there is one minor issue that has to be dealt with, and that is the Argent Dawn. The Argent Dawn had broken away from the Crusade after what they perceived as an increased fanaticism within its ranks. The Grand Crusader had deemed them traitors, but was willing to offer them another chance. Dathrahan instructs Abendis and Talon to travel to Light's Hope Chapel with their best soldiers, confront the renegades, and offer a choice to their leader, Lord Maxwell Tyrosis. Those who hail from the Alliance are to join the Scarlet Crusade against the holdouts of the Scourge. Those from the Horde are to depart immediately, and those touched by undeath are to be put down. If they refuse this offer, they all will die. As Abendis spoke the offer to Tyrosis in front of her army of fanatical crusaders on the slopes of Light's Hope, Talon could not help but ponder if this was the right course of action. He knew that the Argent Dawn was made up of honorable men and women, but what had they accomplished? It was the Scarlet Crusade and Talon's own resolve that had retaken Anderhal and purged Kaer Daro, and it was the Scarlet Crusade that would liberate Stratholme and restore the kingdom of Lordaeron. So when Maxwell Tyrosis refused the offer, and when Abendis gave the order, Talon turned a blind eye to the massacre that followed. With the Argent Dawn removed, the Crusade could set its sights on the stronghold of the Scourge in the Plaguelands. The Crusade stood ready to crush the undead and drive the Lich King's influence from Lordaeron. Talon and Abendis marshaled their forces on the edge of the Plague Wood. Their targets were the Scourge Ziggurats and Plague Cauldrons within. The undead stood ready to repel them. The noxious woods was sure to give the Scourge an advantage, and the necropolis of Naxxramas hovered above, churning out Death Knights, Nerubians, and abominations from a portal deep within the Plague Wood. The charge would be sounded, and the Scarlet Crusade would launch its final gambit to reclaim the lands of Lordaeron. Inside the city of Stratholme, Balnazar prepares to make his move. As Satan Dathrahan, he rallies his troops, and they spill out of the Scarlet Bastion and cut through the undead that wander the streets of the ruined city. The battle in the Plaguewood reaches a stalemate. The sea of undead continue to hurl themselves at the Scarlet Lines. The Crusaders stubbornly press onward, but they cannot hope to win against the necromantic powers of Kel'Thuzad. 
Dathrahan and his elites are able to make progress against the undead within the city, however. Baron Rivendare, leader of the Scourge forces in Stratholme, is cut down in battle, and without the necromancers of Skolomance to bolster their forces, the undead begin to get pushed back. The Crimson Legion then rally, and make a charge out of the service entrance of the city. Dothrahan and his men seize the opportunity to rush the portal into Naxxramas, easing the tension on the Scarlet forces. The Crimson Legion raid the necropolis before more Scarlet reinforcements arrive, and they begin to clear Naxxramas. Eventually, they even confront Kel'Thuzad himself. Kel'Thuzad, although a powerful lich, could not stand against the might of all of Dothrahan's crusaders. But, all too aware of Satan's true identity, Belthuzad would attempt to undermine Balnazar's influence by revealing the truth to his crusaders. But the fanatics of the Scarlet Crusade would hear nothing more than the lies of another wicked undead, the very one responsible for spreading the plague in Lordaeron, and thus they would strike him down. Dathrahand would take Kel'Thuzad's phylactery, and unable to be influenced by its whispers, he would destroy it in front of his loyal soldiers. The Lich King's right hand was severed. Without Kel'Thuzad's powers and enhanced consciousness to direct them, the Scourge would fall into disarray, too far from their master and Northrend to make tactical decisions, and lacking talented necromancers to take command, the undead forces would be slowly wiped out. With Strathholm secure and the undead scattered, Balnazar and his guise of Dathrahan would now instruct his puppets to begin clearing out the remnants of the Scourge in the Plaguelands. He, however, and his Crimson Legion, along with the forces of Talon Forgering, would be heading west. Death to the Banshee Queen Dathrahan and Talon return to the Western Front to find that the Alliance has been successful in keeping the Forsaken and the Horde at bay, leaving the Scarlet Monastery untouched. The freshly trained soldiers within the Monastery await the command to venture forth and rid Tiraspal Glades of the Forsaken. Dothrahan commands Talon Forgering to begin the attack on Tiraspal, while he himself travels to the Scarlet Monastery to unite with his pawn Commander Reynolt Mograin. With Mograin and his fresh troops at the ready, the crusade begins to lay siege to the former capital of Lordaeron. Sylvanas, being the only Horde leader present in the Eastern Kingdoms, and with reinforcements a world away, is forced to retreat deeper into the Undercity. Seizing upon the opportunity that has presented itself, Veramothris stages a revolt against the Banshee Queen. The renegade Forsaken, allied with the Dreadlord, start cutting down Sylvanas' loyalists. Sylvanas, taken completely by surprise and trapped within her royal chambers, is overwhelmed by Veramothris and the traitors. As an ironic end, Veramothris orders his lackeys to tear Sylvanas apart, just as she had once done to Detharok. Outside, however, Dothrahan and Talon breach the walls of Lordaeron, and they begin purging the ruins of the Undercity of Forsaken Forces. The renegades of Veramothris are forced to flee through the sewer system to avoid annihilation. The Scarlet Crusade secures the Undercity and begins combing the underground tunnels for the Banshee Queen. Ultimately, they find what's left of her. With the Forsaken cleared out of the Undercity, Dathrahan summons Talon Forgering to the former royal chamber of the Banshee Queen. Talon, fresh from the battle, assumes they are to discuss the rebuilding of Lordaeron. Once within the dimly lit chamber, Dothrahan commands his elite guard to leave them in private. The Grand Crusader praises the young High Lord for his courage and his valor in the battles. Without Talon, the Scarlet Crusade would not have been able to claim victory over both the Scourge and the Forsaken. It was time for Talon's loyalty to be rewarded. The shadows would stir, and before Talon could react, Veramothris was upon him. The Dreadlord would drain the young Forgering of his life and make hollow his body. But Talon's use was not yet over, for his flesh would serve the Crusade still, but as a vessel for Veramothris. Balnazar and Veramothris, within their fleshy disguises, 
congratulated each other on their success. Their long plan had succeeded. The two Nathrazim had defeated the traitorous undead, and they had secured the Plaguelands. However, there was still much for the brothers to do in order to prepare this world for the coming of the Legion. <laughs>